first thing is that I think when you talk about cannibalism, people tend to um, associate it with uh, extreme horror as a reflex, which I can understand. But for me, um, using um, with this topic, it gives me the opportunity to use the body horror grammar. But it's really a grammar, you see, and. Um, It's not in order to um, fit in a box or anything. I think uh, there are some elements of body horror in my movie, definitely. But for me, it's not only this. It's also a comedy, but it's not only this. And it's also a drama, but it's not only this. And uh, the idea was really to uh, make a movie that doesn't fit one particular box. This movie it really talks about how um, you feel like a misfit and how you cope with it and how you don't um, abide by certain rules or let yourself um, be defined by uh, your genealogy or where which school you're going to or where you come from. So, yeah, in this respect, it's a bit more than a horror movie, even though I really love horror movies. <laughs> When I watch a horror movie, I want to be afraid. I didn't make my movie in order to scare people. Not this one, maybe another one one day, but not this one. Um, it's definitely a genre movie, since I use the grammar of body horror and everything, and you have some unusual scenes for people who are not used to it. Um, so I think it's a bit of a mistake talking about horror movies. Uh, horror movie, I understand why the link is easy to make. You don't need words to explain to you or pieces of dialogues to explain to you what what it's really about. You know what it's really like. When you watch The Fly and you look at him decaying, you know what it's really about. You know it's about death, about disease, about human condition, mortality and everything. It tackles all this just while looking at him. Of course, the dialogues of the movie are also incredible, but they are not explaining us what the movie is about. It's just the image is self-sufficient, let's say. And that's really what I like about the horror grammar. And, um, and for me, it's more like it's, I mean, since the, 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 the first time I tried making a short movie and stuff in film school, it really came naturally as, yeah, as a language. Uh, I didn't set myself the idea to, oh, I'm going to make a horror movie. I just made something. And it so happened that it was very um, body in focused and that the re relationship to reality was constantly moving. Yeah, I'm obsessed with bodies and, um, and uh, I'm very interested about how bodies can evolve and have an autonomy in a way because it conveys a lot of other questioning like if your body has an autonomy like you get very sick or you get a rash or something like that and it doesn't respond to you anymore like you can you say walk you can walk but if you can't walk I mean, what, what does it make you? Is you? Are you your body or is your body you? And what is, where is the identity in this? And again, I mean, when you lose a limb, for example, if, what, how is, um, you know, uh, where is the integrity of the you? And I think, yeah, it helps me answer a lot of these questions somehow. I mean, I, I, while making it, It helps me think about that. I don't, I don't have an answer for anything. It's just, I think it's interesting that we all have a conversation about that. I do believe that 
uh, when you acknowledge the dark part in yourself, this is when you can actually start growing as a moral entity and you can start making moral choices because you know that your freedom comes at the price of the responsibility that you have towards others. So hence the antagonist that is her sister who actually kills people. And, um, and yeah, so basically it's really, really about uh, this, um, this um, human condition that is um, that she feels for the first time, let's say, because uh, she is completely crushed under the weight of all this determinism that there is around her and in her and everything, and how she's gonna fight and grasp her f her her way up to the surface in order to become herself for real. I could have done a gore fest with such a topic. I could easily have made a gore fest from A to Z, and uh, we would have been desensitized to it, and I would lose. I would lose my point completely. What was important is what to show or what not to show, not in order of being able to take it or not, but more in order of this thing with always keeping the empathy, you know. And when it comes to the very, um, with, with, when it comes to the gore scenes. It's just that I tackle this topic. I cannot avoid it. And I tackle it for one particular reason. It's because it talks about humanity. And I really want to show this part of humanity. So this frontality at this moment was essential in order for, for us to understand what was going on in her at this moment, how her humanity was morphing and mutating. And, um, and I cannot turn my camera, I cannot put her in the shade because that would have been lying um, to the audience at this moment. And also it would be exactly the opposite of what I wanted to do. It makes me feel very alive, to be honest, to be in this kind of movies. Last time I saw The Conjuring 2, I was jumping out of my, screaming in the theater and everything. And it was great because everyone else was as well. And we would look at each other and giggle nervously. And so it really creates some kind of community inside the, inside the room. And all these really um, organic uh, experiences for me, it's always to remind us that we're all the same. And this is what I want to make with body horror grammar in my movie is really the fact that at one point everyone can relate to a rush, to a hardcore waxing because hair that pulls the skin, even if you never got waxing, you know it's painful because it's in you, you know? And I love the equality that is the result of these physical reactions. And all of a sudden, everyone is the same in the room, you know? I think it's beautiful.